I'm not sure how much of this you're going to see, but this is a LED light for a street sign and a lot of them are failing around the city of Embra. And I thought we'd take a closer look at why they're failing. So this video is going to start with some strobe. I say it's going to involve Vince being Ride incredibly like rude. Yes. But uh, here's the sign at night. Yes, no, I'm not. Um, so the sign, uh, I'll give you a clue. No, that's not helpful. That's not helpful, Vince. No. Do I do it again? Fuck off. I won't say, I won't say <laughs> no, it's, no, it's absolutely <laughs> fine. Yeah. Uh, one LED is lit up. here. I'm with my co-workers. We've been drinking. <laughs> don't, don't touch my nipples. <laughs> Fuck off. Go away. And uh, the, the yes, this is flashing. <laughs> and that's what this video is about. So let's Go investigate start, yeah. why this is flashing. And can I get a cherry picker and take this down? No, I can't. Maybe. Yes, indeed. My colleagues being as helpful as they usually are. But anyway... Now we've seen the symptoms of the fault, I was giving it some thought and I'm going to draw you the inside of that light. So it's a reflector, a curved reflector like this, that looks like it's made of plastic, I'm not sure, and it sort of actually comes down to a shape like that. And then there's a strip in the middle, which is clearly intended to accommodate seven LEDs. There's the one in the middle that is populated, uh, and the one on the outer side that is populated too, uh, and there's positions that aren't populated for another four LEDs. So that uh, strip can take seven LEDs. And it made me wonder, given the size and given the type of application, is it intended to replace a T5 8 watt fluorescent tube? So there's a connector mounted onto the circuit board here that disappeared through a hole into the, in the case and presumably the ballast was maybe just mounted, the driver of the LEDs was mounted behind here. Incidentally, I'm uh, in the student accommodation at the moment, which is why the sound is all boomy and unusual. So the type of LEDs that were used are those classic sort of Luxian star type beads, which have the sort of, they've got a plastic ring with the lens on top and then the little lead coming out either side that then steps down. And they also were using the little clip-on cover that sits down over those. So the LED goes down there. And you've got a clip-on cover that then has a collimating optic to fire the light forward to each shape the uh, beam. And it's notable that in the one that uh, we were looking at there, I think it was that one, uh, this one was completely missing. So you could see just the bare LED with the little wings coming out of it. And likewise, in these positions, you could see the pads. I'm guessing they must shunt them out in some way. I'm uh, also guessing that one track from this connector probably goes down to that end, and the other one probably goes down to that end, and then they sort of bridge through the LED positions. But it's notable that uh, the I think I saw one fitting that was working and all three LEDs were lit. Other ones were faulty. They only had one LED lit or one LED was set, uh, but they were the ones that were flashed on and off. And one LED was lighting continually when it flashed on and off and the other uh, that was still semi-working was just pulsing when it did that. So what had happened here is the LEDs had gone short circuit and that kind of gives a clue as to why it was flashing. So if you look at the circuitry of a typical driver, uh, you've got the main supply coming in, in this case it would be in the UK it would be about 240 volts, still 240, uh, through a bridge rectifier, and that converts it, so that's the AC, and it converts it into DC, and that then charges a supply capacitor up to the peak of the mains voltage, which is actually close to about 350 volts. And there's a switch mode circuit in it that basically consists of a module, the chip itself, which has a winding of the output transformer. So this is why they can make these so small. It basically, it means that the transformer doesn't have to run at 50 hertz in, in the case of the UK or 60 hertz in the case of uh, some other countries. But uh, it converts it to DC and that means it can run this little transformer at very high frequencies. So there's a switching component in here that pulses that transformer. Uh, and the output of that transformer goes through a simple diode, single diode, and charge the capacitor. And that output has the LEDs across. It's the classic LED driver. And if everything was going normally, this capacitor would normally have about, say, 9 volts across it, roughly 3 times 3 volts. But in this case, because it was faulty, it only has about three volts across it because those two LEDs were faulty. So that's quite an important factor here. You see, there's also another winding. And uh, I should explain that 
when the this coil is turned on uh, across the sort of main supply, it's turned on very briefly, just it creates a magnetic field in this uh, core here. And then when it turns off again, that field collapses and you get a current flow of opposite direction. So that's the, when it's collapsing, when this is off, that's when the energy that's been stored magnetically in that little core then goes through this diode and charges up get that capacitor. It means it, it sort of it filters it through in little pulses. But there's also another winding. There's another winding over here on the primary side that is used to charge a capacitor for the power supply's own power supply, the actual driver chip's own power supply. So it's got its own capacitor there. And initially when you turn that on, there's a slight delay. And this is called the bootstrap circuit. I've mentioned it before. And these are typically one meg ohm. They're very high value resistors and they gradually charge that capacitor up. And this chip has two thresholds. It's got a threshold at which it will turn on and then a threshold which it will turn off. And initially when you turn it on, the Capacitor charges up until it say reaches, let's just say about 12 volts threshold. And if everything goes to plan, then when it reaches that voltage, it will start running this transformer. And the transformer then couples energy into this capacitor, and then it also couples energy back to this winding, which then charges this capacitor, and that then provides this chip here, the switching chip, with its own supply. But if something goes wrong, uh, say for instance the output was short-circuited or nearly short-circuited, or there was a fault in this circuit, and one of the things I've come across is dry joints in these connectors, sometimes it's a faulty diode, and if the circuit starts running but it doesn't charge this capacitor up, then the voltage will gradually drop when it reaches, say, let's just make a random estimate, it, it varies from chip to chip. When it drops to about 5 volts, this chip will stop. And then it'll wait until the, these resistors have charged that capacitor up until it has another go. And that gives that characteristic flashing. So what I'm guessing is that because this uh, capacitor here would normally have about 9 volts across it if the LEDs were working correctly, but instead it actually only is about 3 volts because those LEDs have failed in a very common mode, which is to short circuit, then what's actually happening there is this capacitor being charged to such a low voltage means that when the circuit starts running, it tries to charge that up, but it's clamped down, and the, because that's clamping the voltage, the voltage here doesn't reach the full uh, supply voltage of the chip that's required. And that means that the, the voltage gradually falls in this capacitor until it goes below the threshold, and then it starts the cycle again. So by this, uh, this uh, faulty circuit with these LEDs clamping the voltage down, it's just stopping the voltage and the power supply actually rising because these two coils are both uh, being sort of operating the same cycle of the, uh, the sort of collapsing field of the magnetic coil. And that also makes me think of a, a little screw up I did. I had a 10 watt LED floodlight and I thought, let's get another color of it, LED and put it in. But I didn't realize that I thought the, uh, I thought all the LEDs that were sold for those were just standard. You know the little 10 watt LEDs that have the nine chips inside them? And some of them actually have all the LEDs wired as three parallel groups going through like that. And the voltage across them is typically about 9 volts. But some of them actually have all the LEDs in series and the voltage across them is 27 volts. And I didn't realise that. So the fitting I tried to put the new LED in, which was a, one of the 9 volt LEDs, was actually designed to take the 27 volt LEDs. And because of that, it pulled, it did exactly what this has done here. It pulled the output voltage the, across the capacitor down and that caused that it to pulse on and off. It wasn't happy at all. And I suppose that's a safety feature because if this gets shorted out completely, then it means that the power supply is not going to drive into a short circuit. It's just going to keep, uh, it's pulsing it. And you, you often see that. If you have a power supply where, say for instance, this diode's gone short circuit, it's overheated or something's happened, it's gone short circuit, you'll often find those uh, power supplies, they make a slight tick, 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 tick in the background. And that's the circuit just sort of trying to actually uh, put out its supply, but it fails to do it because there's something wrong in the secondary side. It's a very simple way of providing a set of feedback against short circuits. Um, and I guess that's what's happened. I would actually like to take one of those fittings down, but alas, I could not find a cherry picker to do so. But uh, quite smart little lights. They were quite a neat little implementation. They certainly put out tons of light, albeit they were somewhat in disco mode.